2021 was a terrific year for the company. We've printed a record adjusted EBITDA of $21.3 billion, a record marketing performance in our, in our marketing and trading business, a EBIT of $3.7 billion, and our industrial business, a $17.1 billion uh, adjusted EBITDA. All of those records across our business. Our net debt is now significantly below our, uh, our cap of 10 billion, down to 6 billion. And as a result, we've been able to announce a $4 billion uh, distribution back to shareholders. That will be made up of cash of 3.45 billion and a buyback of 550 million. On the industrial side, we've really seen strong demand across the world as we've seen um, countries emerge from COVID and we've seen a constrained supply environment. Uh, partly COVID-driven, uh, partly regulatory-driven, partly geopolitically driven. And on top of that, we have very low inventories across the world and across all, inventory, uh, across all commodities. So it's really resulted in very strong margins across our business. And when we look at our business and our competitiveness in terms of our cost base, the margins are, are, are incredibly strong and have provided terrific results for us. On the marketing side, 2022 is a record result for our business. And the strong, the strong trading performance is, in fact, continuing into 2022. The market conditions remain favorable. We see dislocations in the market. We see arbitrage opportunities. And going forward, we, uh, we continue to see the, those, those opportunities. And, uh, and fortunately for 2021, uh, a terrific result and hopefully a good one in 2022 as well. We have a sector-leading climate change strategy. Um, during the course of 2021, we, in fact, improved on that strategy. Going into the year, we never had a short-term target for scope one, two, and three emission reductions. We've now introduced that into our, into our climate change strategy. So we've said now by 2026, we will be down 15% across scope one, two, and three emissions. Uh, we've also increased our targets for our medium-term um, medium target of 2035, where we've now increased it from a, used to be a 40% reduction, now a 50% reduction of our 2019 base year. And our net zero ambition for 2050 remains. On our social side, and uh, unfortunately, it's very difficult to report, but we have had uh, four fatalities in our business uh, during 2021, and that is four too many. Uh, we continue to work very hard, day and night, Peter and his team putting significant effort into our Safe Work program. We've revised our Safe Work program, Safe Work 2. It's being rolled out. We are seeing some excellent results, but so far, uh, not good enough, we are not there. Um, we do believe in zero harm in our business and we do believe we can get there. Diversity and inclusion uh, and our strategy around that was launched during, during the year um, and continues on previous efforts done around our business on diversity and inclusion. And it's a, a key theme for me as CEO and for the management team. And in fact, we have a task force set up of which I lead to ensure we drive that through our business. On the governance side, um, and I've spoken this, uh, about this before, um, we have a best-in-class ethics and compliance program. I truly believe it is, and it's not something that we that is just a standing still product. We continue to work at it day in, day out to continue to improve our business and ensure we're a responsible and ethical operator. As uh, announced this morning, we also expect to resolve uh, the US, UK, and Brazilian investigations during the course of 2022. Um, and we've recorded a provision for these costs in our accounts. From a financial uh, perspective, I, I, I think this is the uh, clearly in terms of record territory, uh, but also just clean, good performances across the board, uh, both in the PL, the balance sheet, the cash flow application, and the financial statements more broadly. Of course, EBITDA up 84%, translating into uh, equity free cash flow 13 billion. That's the key number ultimately within any business. That's what drives your debt reduction, your capacity to make. Uh, to make distributions and payouts uh, to one's uh, shareholders and his testament to whatever return on equity that can be generated in these businesses. On the industrial side today, uh, clearly the biggest part of the business, not to diminish the huge contribution that marketing's uh, clearly done as well, but across both metals and energy, we've seen a performance up 118% to 17.1. The real kicker from H1 into H2 was in the coal business. We'll show some uh, metrics later on. You can see in the energy products just on the coal itself went from 0.9 in the first half, 4.3 billion in the second half to give a full year result of 5.2. Um, and annualizing it, obviously high levels at the moment, even on a conservative forward Newcastle coal deck that we give as well. Um, so 17.1 bil uh, billion good contributions across the board. Of course, commodity prices. We'll see the we'll see the industrial bridge on the next slide as well. 
you can see we've just shown the split H1, H2 was 6.6, uh, 10.5 uh, in, in H2, and just industrials annualizing uh, conservative assumptions in terms of at least revenue on the coal side at 23.5 billion. So there's, as, as we pick up into 2022, we've got a sort of a higher 12% uh, annualized tailwind even going into 2022 at current, uh, current macros. If we do look at what the industrial bridge looks like, obviously the, the main bar is the is the price by 11.1 billion. Uh, Broad-based contribution across uh, metals was 6.2 of that, uh, with the copper business 3.7, both copper and cobalt uh, contributing meaningfully there. Uh, zinc was 1.1, our business there, and 0.7 each from the nickel and the ferro business. Uh, ferro itself is almost into a podium position. They had a, they had a great result from our South African business uh, during the year, both in production and margins. And the energy business was 4.9, coal 4.5, what gets lost uh, often in the numbers, and uh, uh, it, it is a smaller part of a business, but you did see a meaningful turnaround just in the uh, in the, in the oil industrial business as well, where we have some upstream uh, and some of the refining capacity of business we have done in South Africa. There was a meaningful turnaround also from 2020 to 2021. Uh, we've highlighted some of the price increases, uh, average year on year on uh, coal 125 on Newcastle, uh, cobalt, copper, zinc, nickel, ferrochrome, and Brent oil all averaging uh, towards sort of 30s and 50 percent. From a volume side, not not much to speak of. 2020 to 2021, at uh, at point three, uh, we've commented on uh, on the challenges in South African coal and the constraints on the export line. Um, Cause zinc's going through a transition generally in terms of zinc production as phasing out of the old before Jaram gets ramped up. Murren went through a large uh, major uh, maintenance shut, which happens every three to four years. We'll see a pickup in 2022. And to Pakai in terms of grades, so we would hope on the volume side to turn a to turn a sort of an orange bar into green or, or blue as we look into 2022. Uh, with Murren coming back, we've got some extra cobalt production out of uh, out of Africa, uh, and of course Serahon on on some pro forma basis would clearly come in 2022. The cost side, I'm sure we're going to get some questions on that later on. Um, it, it has obviously dwarfed by the 11.1 on the price side, uh, but we did see 0.9 of negative cost variances. Uh, at least 50% of that was in the pure energy, uh, direct or potentially indirect. Uh, but calling out a few uh, a few examples there on the zinc side of the business, uh, particularly our European smelting business uh, was massively impacted by the surge in gas prices and challenges that came in, particularly in Q4 2020. Uh, if you look at the specific results on the European smelting, our EBITDA for the year was 71 against a prior year period of 327. So we've seen 256 uh, reduction just in that business. That mathematically recalculates back in what our sort of uh, business zinc cost is, where we normally give a credit through the mining side. So that is where uh, we have seen some some particular pressure. We'll show some of the spot analysis as we do come through. So roughly a 200 million just year on year impact just on the zinc smelting business. Nickel Coniamber had its challenges early in the year. It closed uh, much uh, stronger in production with a 7,000 uh, Q4. Uh, uh, performance, but there was a sort of 100 million there. And general inflation and energy, which is the balance of the 600, roughly energy, uh, 300, and just other 300. Uh, particular countries have started seeing uh, higher levels of inflation towards the end of 21. Kazakhstan was uh, running about 7 to 8 percent, South Africa about 4 to 5. The others starting to catch up, and that's more of a pressing issue today as we, as we move forward. Currency was a bit of a a headwind of about 0.5, it's, it's turned into, a, depending which day of the week, bubbles up and down, but we're probably slightly positive as we go into 2022 on the currency side.